Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Thoughts on a Friday. Uh, First Thoughts on our Gospel text for this coming Sunday, Matthew, the third chapter, verses 1 through 12. Mm Mm-hmm. Hopefully you have your cup of coffee sitting next to you, too. Pick it up and take a sip every now and then. That's what I'm going to be doing out here on my porch. Cool. It's calm. I mean, it's it's in the high 20s, and it, but tomorrow is going to be a little wicked. It's supposed to ha- have high winds, possibly 60-mile-an-hour wind gusts. Look out below. But, hey, what about our gospel text? It's important to remember that... During the season of Advent, we work our ways backwards toward the birth of Jesus on Christmas. So last week, the first Sunday in Advent, we talked about Jesus and sort of uh, end times type of stuff. Like what's what's the signal that it's all over with and this, that, and the other. Uh, and now we're going back to oh, the person who kind of announces that Jesus is here. John the Baptizer. We'll also be here with them next week as well in this cycle. Uh, but then we get to more of the, the birth of Jesus stuff come the last Sunday in Advent. But what about this Matthew chapter 3? Just in a nutshell, I think you know what it is, but you should go and read it anyhow. It talks about uh, John the Baptizer out there calling people to be baptized, calling them to repent because the time is coming. The time is now. It's coming and it is right now that the one who brings fire and judgment to us is here. And it's not him. It's Jesus. So prepare the way. Okay. So I'm looking at the text in front of me and a couple of things just jump out at me and for us to think about Where does he appear? He appears in the wilderness. He's not going into the city. He's not going to the temple. He appears in the wilderness. Wilderness. Where have we seen it? We see that all over scripture. We see the Israelites going through the wilderness after they've been freed from bondage in Egypt. Uh, We see various examples of different prophets going through the wilderness. We will see Jesus in the wilderness as he's tempted by Satan. When? When he's preparing to launch his ministry and declare the coming of the kingdom. All right. Look at the words that John used. Repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Those are the exact same words that Jesus is going to use, according to the Gospel of Matthew. The exact same words. John is preparing the people for Jesus and his message. The word repent. Oh, we've seen that so many times, right? Repent, repent, repent. Um, It means so much more than be sorry for what you did and what you did that was wrong. But it means to literally make a change. To stop going one direction and start going back in the proper direction. To repent. Now, what's also interesting about that verb and that command to repent is the tense that it is in in the Greek. And in the tense says, hey, this isn't just a one-shot deal. This is all the time. You continually repent. Each and every day when you wake up, you repent. So it's not like, oh, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior way back when I was at uh, youth camp in sixth grade. Um, so I'm safe. No, you repent every single day of your life that's something we often don't think about um preparing the way of the lord making his path straight and that's what john was crying out preparing the way and hey yeah isn't that elijah because he even dresses like elijah wearing a um camel hair coat and a leather belt around his waist we see that in the book of kings it describes elijah Well, didn't uh, some of the other prophets say that I send the prophet, meaning Elijah, back to you? Yeah. And the people believed that John the baptizer was, was Elijah come back. Um, And he is out there just as Elijah. Elijah was in the wilderness. 
And so that that's where John is as well. Yeah, stay away from the city, those centers of power, people power, people wealth, people oppression. Go out into the wilderness where God meets us, where God met his people traveling <clears throat> through the wilderness to the promised land, where God met Jesus. Uh, well, in this instance, where God is going to be meeting Jesus as he prepares for his ministry. All right. They're baptizing, being baptized by John in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. See, that is the only requirement for baptism. And what is this whole thing, baptism? I mean, the Jewish people, they didn't get baptized. They were born into the faith. And the poor guys, they all had to be circumcised, right? But there were um, different rituals for all the different people that they would go through during their lives. But baptism wasn't one of them. The only time baptism came into play was when you were a non-Jewish person who desired to become a Jew. Then you had a baptism ritual. But, hold the phone, there was a group of Jews called the Essenes, and they had all kind of rituals for baptism. And John was very likely a part of this community. A lot of the things that he said and did appear to, to align with, with their thoughts. So is it possible he was taking one of those rituals of baptism and saying, hey, this is what belongs for all Jewish people. We've all lost our Jewishness, our connection to God, and we need to repent. We need to change what we're doing. We need to confess our sins and be plunged into the waters of the Jordan and be cleansed. Okay. It says that he saw many Pharisees and Pharisees coming for baptism. Uh, not a very good translation of the Greek because the, what's translated for baptism doesn't really, it gives you the impression that they want to be baptized. But, and maybe, maybe so, but probably not. That for means to come up against. Maybe they're coming up to tell John, stop doing this nonsense. That's not part of our Jewish faith. And you know it, John. Um, and what does John call them? Calls them a brood of vipers. Between you and me, that wasn't a very nice thing to say. Um, in our parlance, you might say it was John calling them mm, the B word. Yeah, yeah, um, SOBs, yes, okay. Truly, that is what he was saying here. That was a real put down. Brood of vipers. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we won't even go any further than that. But John is really angry as he sees the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming. And this basically sets the scene for the Gospel of Matthew. You're going to see this, this um, resistance to the scribes and the Pharisees by Jesus and by the Gospel writer himself all the way through. And apparently, this was a real problem in Matthew's days. Remember, he's writing his Gospel uh, well after the Jesus event, probably around 80, 90 um, CE. And there's a, a, a lot of uh, pushback going on between the Jews who believed in Jesus, so you want to call them Jesus followers, and the non-Jesus follower Jews. And one of those groups, uh, they were the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. We're going to see the, the Sadducees kind of disappear from the scene after the revolt against Rome. But the Pharisees, no, they, they were still there. Okay, and what is, the, what is the basic thing that John says? You have to bear fruit. You have to show that you have repented. Bear fruit worthy of repentance. And I love this. The, um, don't say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. That would be equivalent to Christian groups now, people who become a Christian and just live an awful, horrible life of saying, I have Jesus as my Savior. Yeah, you do. Uh, but you know what? You're supposed to live like it, too. That's what, that's what Matthew's saying. Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Don't presume to say, hey, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able, I love this, to raise from these stones children to Abraham. You know what's interesting? The word stone and, and, and children, they're, it's like a pun that Matthew does right here. There, it's just one letter difference. 
one letter difference in the Hebrew text. Okay. And he says, now even now, the axe is lying at the root of the trees. What does that mean? The axe was a symbol of execution and power in the Roman world in which Matthew's writing. Yeah, the most common way to be executed was to have your head lopped off with an axe. So God is coming to do that? Now, God is coming to make things right. That's what this kingdom is all about. And it is a kingdom that involves judgment. But guess who it involves judging? You and me. It's not just that guy over there and those people over there. No, it's all of us, you and me. Look, I baptize you with water for repentance, John said. But the one who's more powerful than I is, is coming after me. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Wind and fire. Wind and fire. Oh, yeah, wind. The inside purification process. The fire, he's going to burn the crud right off of us. In the fires of purification for metals, that's what you did. You just burn away the bad stuff. But what did you have left? What was so precious and beautiful? That's us. That's you and me created in God's image. So that purification process, it's going to take place. It's going to take place with you and for me. So just be ready. Just be ready. Um, and again, there's another little pun, a little play on words here. Uh, it's only John who says, I'm not worried to carry his sandals, to carry Jesus' sandals. Um, the other gospel writers say something a little bit different, but the word carry and sandals, that's a play on words that goes on they're very similar so is that what um matthew did with with his little version yeah it, it could be and it's a fun thing i can't carry his sandals but yeah he's the one that's going to be baptizing you a little bit different than me and, and my water is not going to put out his fire let's just put it that way so very interesting the, this whole episode of john the baptizer and he's going to pop up one more time in the gospel of matthew but he's kind of in and out of the scene, preparing us for this one who has come and who also is announcing that this kingdom of God is here, is near, is coming. Yeah, it's all those things. All those things are wrapped up in the way that the verbs are written and spoken back then for you and for me, for the people back then. Yep. So get ready. Christmas is coming. God's blessings be with you.